All right, guys. I didn't want to make this video, but the Suburban broke again. Ugh. Let me uh, show you what happened real quick. Okay, so just a real quick backstory here. Um, taking my boat out to the lake, backed it up, loaded it up, hooked up the trailer. Uh, it was at night, ready to go out, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning, get a little wakeboarding done. And we went out the next morning and crank, 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 crank. Nothing happened. It's like, wait a second here. It worked just fine last night. Um, we have been parking the Suburban on a hill facing downward because it seems to kick off a little better than when it's facing upward so I knew the lift pump was getting weak I knew that the valve in there wasn't keeping pressure there was being some drain back into the gas tank I should the gas tank the diesel tank the fuel tank uh, so I knew that the lift pump was going out so when that happened, I went ahead and ordered up a brand new uh, lift pump from uh, Delphi. The same guys that make the air compressor, the uh, AC compressor for the Maserati. So it's a good lift pump. Comes with a 12 month warranty, we'll see how it does. Now, let me show you this. All right, so that lift pump is way down there underneath all of this maze of crap. So to get to it, I had to remove the alternator, I had to move some of this other stuff aside. Um, of course, you have a hard fuel line and then a soft line to that fuel pump, a few bolts. Uh, you got to take out the plate as well because your fuel pump push rod will fall down and you'll never get it back up without removing the plate first. Use a little bit of heavy grease to hold that fuel pump back up when you reinstall. Okay, that's an old trick, not a big deal. Okay, so. Got the whole thing hooked back up, went inside, went to prime it. So, original uh, fuel water separator, unscrewed this valve here, because you know sometimes just loosening it doesn't get you the fuel out. Cranked it over, boy this thing shot to the bottom of the hood. So that fuel pump was putting out. Excellent. Replaced the screw, got inside, expected this thing to start up, and it would not start. Crank, 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 would not start. Try to drain the pump. The, I'm sorry, I tried to drain the filter. Um, didn't want to drain. Cranked it over with the uh, drain cracked open. Didn't want to drain. Wait a second, where's my pressure? Pull this off again. Cranked it over some more. This time, it would not squirt out through the top. So, I undid the line over here on this side. And there's two lines. One going to the fuel pump and one coming back as a return to the uh, injector pump. And cranked it with the lines disconnected. No fuel. What the heck? How could I have no fuel? Pulled the filter off and that filter was clogged with rust particles. I didn't see any water in there. Um, the diesel looked pretty good but then there was a lot of rust in there. Now that is twice that I found a lot of rust in this fuel filter. So now <laughs> Look at this. You guys see this? Uh, that's some of the rust. Let me get it in the, out of the sunlight here. I don't know, maybe better in the sunlight. Yeah. So that is uh, some of the rust that I got out of the fuel filter. And uh, this has sat for a while. Uh, let's see here. Well, there is a little water in there. I can see the difference as I move things around slightly. There is a little water in that diesel fuel. 
So, I'm suspicious that the tank is all crudded up. So this is a 40 gallon tank. The gauge shows that it is almost full. So I'm gonna have to drain out a lot of this diesel and maybe put it in my backhoe so I can get this thing out of there. Um, but stick around. Let's uh, see what's in there. Is it algae crap? You know, the diesel algae stuff? It's not really algae. Um, is it rust? What is closet clogging up my fuel line? All right, well, now, on a side note, before I begin working on that Suburban, before I get all dirty, I just want to mention that I would rather be working on this Corvette project right now, okay? Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is not build the frame rails because my wheelbase is wrong. I'm actually going to uh, disconnect this torque tube and shorten it and then reinstall that. So that'll be a short video, but not today. Okay? But once I get this torque tube shortened, then I'll be able to build my frame rails and connect the front and the rear suspension together. So stick around for that. Here we are crawling up underneath the Suburban. And I don't know where that wire goes. Figure that out, I guess. Maybe it goes over here. Uh, but it looks like this skid plate here will come down separate from the gas tank. So let's hit those with a little bit of WD first. You know me, love that WD. We'll get all of these bolts. What, we got five? Yeah. All right. All right, I'll let these, uh, these guys soak for a few seconds. is doing the trick. 35 year old bolts and they are coming out. Nothing stripping. Woo! Dang son! <laughs> well, there's the front half. Let's stick in the back. Huh? Time will tell how tough it's going to be to get this uh, skid guard back up. But let's see, let's look at the back side here. I spray with these with WD 40 also. Here we go, look at that. Yeah, it's just six bolts holding this plate in place. that out of the way you can see the 40 gallon tank uh, this is the hose up here that goes to the fill I'm not sure what this is maybe a vent 
Um, I thought there was a drain line or something up here for it, but I don't see anything. So, uh, when I drop this thing, I'll probably go ahead and loosen this clamp for this hose. And maybe this other clamp over here too, since I don't know what this is. And then we'll uh, put the jack button underneath there and we'll undo these, these straps. There's only two main straps holding this big old tank in place. Shoulder blades are gonna be sore. Yeah, it's going. So, on this diesel suburban, even though the uh, engine is mostly metric, uh, it's made for international markets. Remember this thing here was built, well, the basic design was built back in the 70s, 11 16s. So, uh, this 84 Suburban has uh, standard fasteners for the most part. It's wanting to go sideways on me because of the filler tube. Yeah, if you want to get dirty. Dirty, greasy, dirty. Not the fun kind of dirty. No. For it too. But I'm gonna get my channel locks and see if I can't grab this hose and pull it off this filler neck. Because that'll allow the whole tank to, to go to the side. I think these things are folding. Not really. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's a little bit, but not much. I mean, I if it was for the jack, this thing would be dropping. I think that's what is making it tilt. Things. No, there is a um, yeah. filler neck over here that's caught on top of the frame. That's what's keeping it from dropping down. And I can't reach the main filler neck. Oh, hey, look at it. Hidden key. It's a key? That's a key. Oh. Let's see if there's a key inside. There should be. Darn it! Someone stole my key. A hidden key, but no key. <laughs> that's funny. I've had this thing for three years, I guess. And that's the first time I've seen that hidden key. Alright, so in case you guys don't know what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to drop this gas can tank, this diesel tank, down below the level of the frame rail. So I can, one, see it up on top of it and get to the hoses and the lines. And two, I can probably pull it out the driver's side. And uh, hopefully the hoses on this far side will come undone. Don't know if I need to undo these straps for the tank or not. <laughs> Usually in the past I haven't needed to do that. Oh, that seems going to be really heavy, yes. It's probably 150 pounds. It's half full, it's about 150 pounds. And it breaks down when it's half full. Of course. So I'd like to be able to drain the tank, but at this point I'm just looking at getting uh, the hoses off. That's one. 
We have one bolt per fuel line, which is kind of stupid. Okay, so with this tank dropped down, just short of the frame rails, we were able to get our hands up in there and disconnect the feed and return line for the diesel. Um, a couple of little wires here, not a big deal. Fuel level cinder and uh, some kind of like of a wire. I'm not sure that's a ground wire or not, but it should be okay for now. There is a bolt right there on top of the wire. A bolt? Yeah, it's holding it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we may have to undo that wire. It looks like you can do it with that one. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can see what size that is. It looks like that. Uh, where's that bolt? It's on top. Okay, right there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a half inch. It looks like right there. Yeah. That feels like a half inch. So, the ground wire right up here on top of the driver's side frame. You're a little crooked. We're a little more. There we go, now we're going. Going back. Yeah, we're good, we're good. That's good. Alright, stop. Okay. It's gonna wanna slide off. Just a matter of sliding it out now. So yeah, um, like I said it might be kinda of heavy here, so let's keep our fingers and toes clear. <laughs> Me a little. There we go. Now you can lower the jack all the way. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's on the ground. I'm going to push it over these straps here. Um, can you put that strap on top? Is it on top of the strap? Okay, yeah. Put it on top. I'm gonna push it this way. Put the other strap on top. And now we're gonna slide the whole thing out the back. Woo! Dang, son! <laughs> If we want to do what? Make a hole. We can, but there's a good chance this tank will have to be replaced anyway if it's that gummed up like what I suspect. Alright. And now we gotta drain some fuel. You can it right there and see how it looks? Yeah, you can. It's gonna be a bunch of fuel though. Uh, let me get the air compressor. I'm gonna blow that out before I do anything. Close, hang on. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see here. Drop this down. Okay, we're 
Still rolling. All right. Let's see how this looks here. Kind of rusty. That is rusty. That is the filter. It's supposed to be anyway. Um, yeah. Not sure if this can suck stuff through there or not. Kind of reddish inside. Like something rust. Yeah, that's uh, not good. A lot of rust. Little McDonald's had a fun. Take a while, guys. How many gallons is that? Five gallons? This is five gallons. Which one is right now? Staying off here. You want to do the air hose stuff? Kind of Alright, so you know, I crawl up underneath here and find those two hoses that go up in there. Do you see those? Uh huh. You see those? And you want to stick that right on the end and blow on it. I'll tell you when, okay? Crap comes out. All right, give me just a little shot of air. More. More. Whoa. Got some diesel out. Uh, that's the return line. I don't think that's necessary. All right, well, that's flowing. That is definitely flowing. Yeah. Woo! No, I think we're good. Just gonna see what kind of crap we have in there. And I got some rust and stuff, but nothing big. Um, all right. All right, do it again. Okay. Hang on. Uh, hang on a sec. No. This is why I just got out of there if you want to look at it. That's what's in that line. I don't know. It looks like rust and stuff like that. Yeah. It's not I the do. best looking. That was clean a while ago. That's what happens. Maybe setting uh, it's on the bottom of the line. That was. I can push again, but your yeah. camera is full of this one. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me grab a napkin. Because it's mostly air at this point. Yeah, I was not expecting that much diesel in the line. Yeah, I thought that line was going to be mostly empty at this point, but nope, there was still a lot of diesel there. All right, so this is a clean napkin. Let's see what kind of crap we got. All right, hit it real good. Keep it going.
Alrighty. That's good. What are you getting? Some coming up to the back. Coming back at, at you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? I wonder why that is. It does some drops. It was really hard to push through it. Do you have a lot of air pressure? I think so. Huh. It's just vapor right now, but it's the, the one that's hanging down right there, that big one with the clamp on the end. Yeah. Okay. It is, I think it's just air mostly. Okay. So I just want to aim it down. Clean. I guess now. Okay. All right. Well, um, we pulled. Let's see here. Three, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. About eighteen gallons of diesel out of this tank. And uh, you know, we're still not really sure what was clogging up the system, but I mean, the breach went in here, and I'm just grabbing up here with the where the uh, uh, tank is, and wait, look at all that. Can you see that? My hand was clean when I put it in there. That's all rust and debris and that stuff is just falling into the diesel fuel and screwing things up. So it's an old tank. It's a 35 year old tank. So I think it's best just to get a new tank for this vehicle. Um, so we'll cut it there and catch you again real soon. Well, we finally got our tank in from eBay. Box is a little smashed. But uh, this is going to sink down to the garage and we'll see how it looks. This last piece in from Rock Auto today. This is supposed to be the fuel sock. Uh, diesels take a special sock over a gasoline engine because the diesel is thicker and harder to pull through. So this should be diesel specific. So we'll install that as well. Tank. You 
can see how it wears right there. This will help to keep the frame rail from digging into the tank. Oh, come on. This is not fun. Crawling up underneath the truck to get to these uh, hoses before I button everything up. I guess I could just leave that there, but like I say, um, I just want to put the correct bolts in there. These are the correct bolts, the correct little bolts. So now that the strap's tight, hopefully I can loosen it up and get these other bolts in. Okay, here it is, the squirrel's view again. So I took out the long bolt. Gonna go just barely. Yeah, it's gonna work. Yeah, it's tight though. It's close. Okay, so I got a 11 sixteenths socket for the nut and a 5 8 inch wrench for the bolt. And this strap is going tight. Fuel tank is in. And uh, after cranking it twice for about, I don't know, five seconds each, I am getting fuel, yay, out of uh, my feed line here. So we're gonna tighten this up. And next we're going to try to uh, bleed this uh, filter thing. couple ways to bleed this filter. This one here on top is the easiest way to get the air out. Uh, you just kind of crack it open and as it pumps through here it fills up and then it comes out this hose here. Um, there's also a drain on the bottom here. Mine doesn't seem to be working. It's probably clogged up or something. I'm not sure what's up with that clog. I'll figure it out one of these days. You gotta make sure these lines are tight. All right, so feed line is on, the line to the injector pump is on. This is cracked open, so I'm gonna crank the engine over a bit more until we get some fuel out of that top vent. Go down a little bit. Starter gets hot. <laughs> 
know. Alright, I still have three injectors cracked open from before. So let's turn the key and see if this thing will start up. Great. Do you think I'm filming? I don't know. Let me see. What does it look like? Is the thing moving? 27, 28, 29, 30. Or signs of diesel coming out of the uh, injectors. I don't see any signs of it yet. Yeah, they're loose. The caps are loose, so they're just kind of sitting there. I should make a nice spray once that thing primes. Oh, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> now so let's go ahead and get the wrench and we'll do a thing but yeah I got uh, got the thread started so now I'm just tightening these caps you guys can see in there <clears throat> yeah turn these up have one on the other side. Yeah, here it is. You can hold the rail down. The line, there we go. So that thing goes in. Yes, yeah, it up. Careful not to pull off any of your return lines. We'll have a constant diesel drip. Get in there. I'm not doing so good here. there. <clears throat> I think that'll do it. Alright. Will it fire? Subscribe!